Today I am using some scrap pallet wood and building some plant holder upper trellis type devices for the garden. Hey guys, how's it going? So Danielle wanted a few custom vine climbers, pea trellises, tomato cages, and cucumber cages. I just happen to have a bunch of pallet wood scraps because, you know, I have a bunch of pallets that I do have and have used. So I have some scraps left over. So I think it's something I can put together pretty easily. To start this project off, I pull a bunch of offcuts out of the bin from my attempted butcher block countertop project. If you missed that, you can check that out up here. And then over at the table saw, I trim them down to a consistent width. With the scraps sliced, I pull a couple of the rougher pallet boards off the lumber rack and run the one edge through the table saw as well. With those edges cleaned up, I set the fence back to the same width as the scraps I already cut and run the pallet boards through and have pretty much everything cut to three quarter inch square. And here's something that you should be aware of. This wasn't a kickback, but it did throw me off for a second. As I was pushing through the thin stock, there was a weak point that snapped between the blade and where I was pushing, so things got a little bit squirrely. Nothing too major, but something to look out for if you're using the same same type of stock with that type of defect in it. Something else I should have done was take out the nail tops that were left behind when I took the pallet apart. I knew the table saw blade was on its last legs, so I wasn't too concerned about damaging the blade itself, but it did end up throwing a little bit more sparks and shrapnel at my face than I was expecting or would have preferred. So that's something else to look out for, I suppose. With all of the stock prepped and all of the shrapnel picked out of my eyeballs, that's a joke. Wear your safety glasses. I head over to the workbench and squarely and centeredly screw and nail a few scrap pieces to it to turn it into a massive jig for what I'm going to call the oil derrick. Since my workbench is only four feet long, I figured that it was a good height to work with. So I cut the upright portions to four feet and started working on the horizontals, which I just glue and staple into place using a couple spacers to set the next piece. With all of the horizontals done, I flip the unit around and mark out where to cut the excess of the horizontals off. Then deciding that it was redundant and I could just use a scrap to cut the excess off, I just use a scrap to cut off the excess because marking it was redundant. And it keeps the angle consistent, which wouldn't have worked as well if I did it off the marked line on its own, which is why it was redundant. Did I mention that marking it was redundant? It, it was. With that joke now driven squarely into the ground and fertilizing the tree planted above it, I threw together another side of the oil derrick and began attaching the pieces. Basically, I just want it square, so I pick the top, middle, and bottom rows, cut some stock to the same lengths, and glue and staple them down. Oil derrick done. This one, anyway. I did end up building a second one with the same width and height, but half the depth. With a quick modification to the workbench jig, I can start on the rest of the plant holder upper trellis type devices. Basically the same method as before, except now I'm working with two parallel uprights. With the uprights butted up against the stop at the edge of the workbench, I glued and stapled in the top horizontal and used a pre-cut spacer to set the next two horizontals. Then I flipped the unit around and for end and repeated that process for the opposite side, leaving this gap in the middle. Once I had a second unit completed, I set them both upright on the workbench, clamped them up, and stapled in the next batch of horizontals on both sides of both sides. Then I measured for center and cut the whole unit in half for two separate tomato or cucumber cages. Using the same workbench setup, I also built sides of the uprights with the horizontals using the same spacing all of the way down. This was for the last type of plant holder upper trellis type device, which is basically just a hinged trellis. I didn't have hinges for this size of material, but I did have a drill and some extra T-bolts and nuts. So I just offset the trellises, drilled a couple holes through both sides of both pieces, and tightened down the nuts. With that, the four plant holder upper trellis type devices are effectively done, but since I'm not 100% sure what kind of wood this is, probably spruce pine or fir, or SPF. It won't hold up great to the weather, so to give it all a little bit better of a chance, we gave it all a coat of paint. Danielle wanted purple, so well, I guess it's more like lavender or lilac, but purple. Whatever you want to call it. 
No, it won't be the be all and end all of weather protection, but it's better than nothing and we should get a few years out of these at least, which for what we paid for it, basically just the paint works for me. You think I would have learned from the last front planter I did a couple weeks ago and opted for a sprayer, but I didn't. Oh well. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow me on Instagram at John the Shriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you here in the next video, and have a good one.